I had Shackleton uh, around my neck as a neck warmer, but it's uh, we're in a heat wave in Ottawa here right now. It's just uh, incredibly warm for us. Um, it's lasted. It's we're you know well into ten days. It's uh, running for a couple of weeks. Um, temperatures, you know, today was 36 uh, Celsius, uh, Humidex uh, close to 40. We're in a bit of a drought, uh, not much rain. So anyway, uh, so Shackleton, he, he gets a reprieve um, this video. I ran out of um, food to bribe him with um, in my office here. So I'm going to continue to talk about lightning which has been in the news recently and i'm going to eventually discuss i'm going to well i'm going to show papers on how we expect lightning to change um, as climate change proceeds so it's been in the news recently with india um, and a couple of years ago there was an unbelievable almost thirty-seven thousand lightning strikes in 13 hours in india result of extreme weather patterns it was in april 2018 um, lightning strikes are common in India during heavy monsoon rains, but in this particular region where they had almost 37,000 strikes, it usually sees increased lightning activity before the monsoon begins. Um, but, you know, for example, last year, the previous year, there were something, nor in a normal year, there's something like 30,000 lightning strikes th throughout the entire month. Um, in that region, but here they had 37,000 in the space of, of uh, 13 hours. Some scientists believe that global warming will significantly increase the frequency of lightning strikes. This would be bad news for India, but bad news for many places because lightning uh, triggers uh, a lot of these wildfires. So in, region, in regions that get really, really dry, and then you have the lightning and uh, you know, triggering fires, you know, think of fires being triggered up in the high Arctic as the Arctic warms and as as uh, these warm weather storms move further and further north as the Arctic continues to, to warm. Um, so in the case of India, this this region where there was all this lightning, there's usually increased lightning activity before the monsoon cold winds from the Arabian Sea collided with warmer winds from northern India. So that clash of cold air and hot air, cold air went underneath the hot air, forced the hot air up, convective uplift. If it's moisture laden, then it forms more clouds than usual. And that increases the chance of storms and lightning strikes. Cloud cover in that year extended over 200 kilometers or 124 miles. Usually it's in patches, each patch being about 15 to 16 kilometers long. So this was a very rare condition and there are all of these lightning strikes in the 13 hours. Um, and again, it mentions a couple things similar uh, to the, the other article, uh, over at least 2000 people died in lightning strikes in India every year since 20, 2005. Um, example, in June 2016, 93 people were killed, more than 20 injured by lightning strikes in a bunch of different states. The US, it's 27 people die per year. You know, the warnings are much better, less people work outside. So the lack of a reliable warning system is cited as one reason for the high number of deaths in India. So that can be improved upon greatly. Another is that a large number of people work outdoors, which makes them more vulnerable. Um, and there are warnings that go to cell phones. So, you know, different groups of workers, it's important that, that somebody has a phone in a, in a group and then they can warn everybody else to take shelter. Um, they send out messaging um, messages, alert messages on say WhatsApp and Telegram, different apps. Um, and of course, announce things on TV and radio, telling people to stay indoors. Um, but you know, people in the fields generally don't carry their phones, so this is a problem. So these are things that can be um, improved upon by different protocols. Now, climate change will make lightning strike more. So this is an article going back to even 2014, 
Um, so there was a, there was a, I'll, I'll show you the original peer reviewed paper for this, but global warming will significantly increase the frequency of lightning strikes according to US research. So they calculated that for every two lightning strikes in 2000, there will be three lightning strikes in 2100. So a big increase in lightning, uh, that's using the models, but of course with warming being much faster than, than the models that show, compare 2100 to 2000, then we can expect to see more lightning, much more lightning, much more quickly. As well as triggering wildfires, it alters the chemistry of the atmosphere. Okay, so what they did is they used a new method, new back then, where they looked at the relationship between temperature and lightning storms. They estimated the heat energy available to fuel uh, storm clouds. So that's looking at the CAPE, convective available potential energy multiplied by the precipitation to get an idea. And they found that the lightning flashes per unit area were proportional to that. So as the planet warms, there will be more of this fuel around. Uh, so when thunderstorms get triggered, they will be more energetic. So they, they found that for every one C rise in global temperature, that would lead to an increase in the frequency of lightning strikes by 12%. Now this is an interesting video, which shows the lightning strikes across the US um, over a full year. Okay, so it just goes through the uh, different days of the year and it looks at the lightning strikes each particular day in the red across the U.S. And, uh, you know, you can see, you know, some areas are get it, get it a lot more often than others because a lot of it depends on the frontal, you know, where the fronts meet, where the warm, humid air from the Gulf of Mexico, for example, comes up and meets the cold air coming down from Canada, etc. A lot of thunderstorms in the prairies and Tornado Alley. Okay, so there's a U.S. National Lightning Detector Network, and it detects an electromagnetic pulse every time lightning strikes in the U.S. So you have different stations all around, and then you triangulate. So each station gets a pulse, and there'll be a delay depending on the distance the station is from the lightning burst. And by triangulating, um, or having even more than three stations detecting it, you can get a very accurate um, positioning of where the lightning burst was and the time of the lightning strike as well is very accurately recorded. So then you can collect all kinds of data. Um, half of the wildfires in the US are triggered by lightning, okay? But lightning also sparks a chemical reaction that produces a puff of greenhouse gases called nitrogen oxides. Lightning is the dominant source of nitrogen oxides in the middle and upper troposphere. Well, think of it. The atmosphere is 80% nitrogen, or N2. When you get a lightning burst, it breaks apart the molecules. It breaks apart oxygen. The oxygens can, re can react with the nitrogen and form NO or NO2, etc. And these are greenhouse gases. So you can get... Um, you know, the, the, the night, the, so, so this is not so good, okay? Um, and also the, the, the uh, radicals, the charged particles, the ions in the atmosphere, a lot of chemistry going on, and, uh, you know, the lightning itself can generate ozone, but some of the other ions form can react and break down ozone also uh, with uh, methane. So there's a lot of chemistry going on. Lightning is very important to, um, to um, affect the chemistry of the atmosphere, the, the, the chemical composition, okay? Um, so, you know, it's important to understand not just additional lightning, 12% more lightning per degree Celsius of warming, but where is the lightning gonna happen? So the regional patterns, are very important and there's a lot of uncertainty on those. Uh, you know, where are the extreme weather events? Where are the storms, etc.? And of course, you know, if the Earth did warm by four Celsius, you know, before 2100, the change in lightning would be the least of our worries, according to this guy. Um, okay, so I'll look at that in a bit more detail, but here, here's a paper. Um, Projected increase in lightning strikes in the United States due to global warming. This is just a uh, paper 
back around the time in 2014, around the time this article was was published. And you know, lightning plays an important role in atmospheric chemistry and in the initiation of wildfires. But the impact of global warming on lightning rates is poorly constrained. So they proposed. So this was new at the time. They the lightning flash rate seemed to be proportional to the convective available potential energy, or the CAPE, and I'll talk more about that, times the precipitation rate. So that explains 77% of the variance of the time series of total cloud-to-ground lightning flashes over the contiguous United States. Storms convert CAPE times precipitated water mass to discharge lightning energy with an efficiency of about 1%. And they used 11 climate models, and the, the result was a 12% 12, 12 increase per degree Celsius in lightning flashes. Okay, uh, 12 plus or minus 5. So it could be 7%, or it could be 17% increase in the lightning flashes per degree Celsius increase in global warming. Um, you know, lightning occurs more frequently when it's hotter than when it's colder. So why is there lightning happening in the Arctic? But how much more lightning should we expect as global temperatures increase? There's about 25 million lightning strikes, 25 million lightning strikes per year. Okay, um, and uh, it's, that's predicted to increase by 12% for every degree of rise in global average air temperature. And again, that's from using the CAPE times the precipitation. Um, there are some other methods that do it, which show, uh, which, which show similar results, but there, there's nuances. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay, so uh, getting back to some of the other recent stories, this was June 26, so this is fairly recent. Extraordinary lightning mega flashes in Brazil and Argentina set new distance and duration records. Okay, so this was a lightning burst here over an extraordinary distance. So there was a 16 second flash of lightning in Argentina on March 4, 2019, and a 700 kilometer bolt in Brazil on October 31st, 2018. And the WMO just recently, a few weeks ago, they they changed their record books. They did. They, they studied these events and verified them, and uh, they described these records as extraordinary, noting that such extremes are living measurements of what nature is capable of. So, a committee of experts they recognized these two new world records. They verified them with satellite lightning imaging imagery technology. Um, so, it is the world's greatest extent for a single lightning flash is a single flash that covered a horizontal distance of 709 kilometers or 441 miles across parts of southern Brazil on October 31st, 2018. That's the distance between Boston and Washington or between London and the border of Switzerland. So here's the lightning burst. One single lightning burst covering an extent of 309 um, 300 and, or 709 kilometers. I mean, just phenomenal. 709 kilometers. That's, of course, the straight line distance, the extent. But if you follow the actual path that the lightning took, it's way, way higher than that, right? It's almost like a fractal. To, you know, if you follow the direct path and then there's all these sub branches and stuff, it's much, much, you know, it's huge. But this distance here is 709 kilometers. How does that compare to the previous record? The previous record was 321 kilometers, less than half, across Oklahoma on June 20th, 2007. And there was, a, okay, so there was a different lightning flash which set the duration record, the greatest duration for a single lightning flash, 16.73 seconds from a flash over northern Argentina on March 4th, 2019. Okay, and that's this uh, lightning flash here. The, the previous record was, um, the past the previous record for the greatest duration was in France, um, and it lasted, it was a 7.74 second duration um, lightning flash, cloud to cloud. This one, 16.73 seconds, just blew away the previous record. 
case, the atmosphere conditions are definitely changing. Thank you for listening.